Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on momentum and collisions. The topic of this video is controlling a collision with the F delta T equal M delta B equation. We wish to figure out how can the variables of the impulse momentum change equation be varied in order to increase or decrease the force that an object experiences during a collision. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, we introduce the impulse momentum change equation, which you see listed there. The equation predicts the relationship between four collision variables, the force, the collision time, the object mass, and the velocity change of the object. We can rearrange the equation to put force by itself. And when done like that, we can better predict how you can manipulate the variables in order to increase or decrease the force. That is, how can you manipulate m, delta v, and delta t in order to exercise control over the collision. Let's begin by discussing the relationship between mass and collision force. The equation shows force on one side and object mass in the numerator on the opposite side. When you have a situation like this, we would describe the collision force as being directly proportional to the object mass. Because if you were to increase the object mass, you would increase the collision force. And if you were to decrease the object mass, you would decrease the collision force. A matter of fact, if you were to double the mass, you would cause a doubling of the collision force. And if you were to half the mass, you would half the collision force. In other words, by whatever factor you change the mass, you would change the collision force by the same factor. As an illustration of this effect, let's consider the task of driving a stake into a ground by the collision of a mass with it. If you were to use a small mass, as in the diagram on the left, you would end up with a small collision force, and it would be difficult to drive that stake into the ground. But the use of a large mass would cause a large force on that stake and make it a lot easier to drive the stake into the ground. This illustrates how we can control the variable mass in order to exercise control over a collision. Now let's consider this example in a little bit more detail. Object A is the small mass object. B is the large mass object. And let's assume that they're released from the same height and upon collision with the stake, they come to a stop. What this tells us is that the delta V, the change in velocity, will be the same for each stake since release from the same height. And let's assume also that the collision time is the same for each object. The only thing different here about object A and object B's collision with the stake is their mass and the resulting force. Let's ask, how do you compare the momentum change, the impulse, and the force for these two objects? Well, first, we can begin by saying that B has the greater mass, and thus, it has the greater momentum change. And, since momentum change is equal to impulse in a collision, we can also reason that B will experience the greater impulse. And since we're assuming here that the collision time delta T is the same for each of the objects, we could finally reason that object B must be experiencing the greater force when it hits the stake. Now let's consider the variable velocity change. As the equation shows, the force is directly proportional to the velocity change. That is to say, if you made the velocity change larger, you'd make the force larger. And if you made the velocity change smaller, you'd make the force smaller. Matter of fact, a doubling of the velocity change would double the force, and a halving of the velocity change would half the force. By whatever factor you alter the velocity change, you would alter the force by the same factor. As an illustration of this, let's consider the low speed collision of a car with a wall. Let's compare the hit and stick situation to the hit and in rebound situation. In the case on the left, the car is moving at 10 meters per second and comes to a stop. That's a velocity change of negative 10 meters per second. But here on the right, when the car hits the wall and rebounds, the velocity changes from positive 10 to negative 5, and that's a change of negative 15 meters per second. In the case on the right, the hit and rebound collision, there's going to be a bigger force because of the bigger velocity change. That's why we design cars to hit a wall wall and crumple up, as in the case on the left. It might ruin the, the car, but it saves the lives of the passengers. Let's look more closely at the hit and stick collision of car A 
and the hit and rebound collision of car B a little bit more closely. The assumptions that we'll make is that the cars have the same mass, they have the same pre-collision speed, and their collision time is the same. We've already mentioned how car B has the greater velocity change, 15 meters per second to the left compared to 10 meters per second for car A. And because it has the greater delta V, it also has the greater momentum change. And since impulse is equal to momentum change, we would reason that car B also has the greater impulse. And finally, since the collision time is the same, we could reason that car B must also have the greater force since it experiences the greater impulse. The final variable to consider is the collision time, delta t. In the equation, you notice that force is on one side and the delta t is on the opposite side, but in the denominator. That tells us that the collision force is inversely proportional to the collision time. That is, if you were to make the collision time bigger, you'd make the force smaller, and if you were to make delta t smaller, you'd make the force larger. A matter of fact, if you were to double the delta t, you would half the force, and if you were to half the delta t, you would double the force. By whatever factor you change the delta t, you would change the force by the inverse or reciprocal factor. That is, three times the delta t means one-third the force. The classic illustration of this is the use of an airbag in a car. The alternative to hitting an airbag during a collision would probably be hitting a steering wheel. And if you hit a steering wheel, your momentum is stopped rather abruptly with a very small delta t. But hitting the airbag would cause your momentum to stop more gradually, resulting in a bigger delta t and a smaller force. And that's physics for better living. Let's look at this collision comparison a little bit more carefully. Driver A hits a steering wheel and driver B hits an airbag. Let's assume each driver has the same mass, the same pre-collision speed, and each comes to a stop as a result of the collision. How would we compare their momentum change, their impulse, and their force? Well, in the case of the momentum change, we would reason that they have the same momentum change. Since their delta V is the same, and we're told their mass is the same. And since momentum change is equal to impulse, we'd have to reason also that using an airbag doesn't result in a different impulse. The impulses are the same for driver A and B. But what is quite different about these two drivers is how they get their impulse. In the case of colliding with the steering wheel, the delta T is rather small, and the force is rather large. Ouch. But when you collide with the airbag, your collision time may be 100 times the time, which makes your force 1 100th of the force. The collision force for driver B is considerably smaller. This inverse relationship between collision time and collision force is at the heart of numerous safety engineering decisions. The idea is if we can make the delta T big, we'll make the force small, and that's good. But if the delta T is small, the force will be big, and that's usually bad. So consider the following examples, like dashboards of cars. They're padded. That extends the collision time in an unfortunate situation. Or you look in the gymnasium and you look at the walls and you notice, hey, those are padded walls behind the basketball hoop. Or mats that gymnasts do their routines on are padded mats. Consider sports equipment, like helmets, they're padded on the inside, or gloves, they have a little padding, thus extending collision times. Think about when you jump, and land. You land with bending knees instead of straight leg knees in order to extend the collision time. Or consider catching a ball. You retract your hand backwards instead of holding it stiff. This extends the collision time. You can think of numerous other situations where we have designed for a big delta T so that the force is small. And that's physics for better living. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, could you help us out with a like or maybe subscribing the channel or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for an action plan, a series of next steps for making your learning stick. Here are three items from our website. The links are in the description section. There is a concept builder, a simulation, and a tutorial page, any one of which could make your learning stick. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and thanks for watching.